incredibly well cut. Well, as are you. Right on the edge of being slightly too tight, but not too tight. Well, I hope it's not. It's an art. Whereas for me, I had to dress like a pregnant woman. <laughs> So listen, congratulations uh, Thank you. on the nominations tonight. Nine? I think, yes, I think nine. nine. I think that's right, yeah. yes, yes. Um, you obviously knew the film was going to be special while you were doing it, but are you surprised in any way that it's resonated with the public in the way it has? Well, you know, it's fair to say that every time you make a movie, you think it's the best movie ever. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you're always in that kind of tunnel of self-belief when you make it and completely committed to it and all that kind of stuff. I think when we finished it, we felt we had something special. But the big thing for us has been the way it's connected with audiences. I mean, the fact that, that so many people have turned up to see it. That is huge for us. Because, you know, it's not um, got two giant stars in the leads. You know, it's challenging. It's a war movie. Uh, you know, certainly in America, it's not a war that they have any particular mm. association with, really, other, like, unlike the Second World War. So that whole thing has been a brilliant treat for us and, and, and that, that for me is sort of everything. I think over here as well at least that there's a sense especially with the last veterans dying probably what five ten years ago that yeah. there's that it's is now receding into sepia yeah. and, and to keep that alive and there's never really been in modern in the in modern day uh, I, I, I guess a great World War One film. Well what you say is true but what's staggering for me is that it's also true of World War Two veterans. The last World War II veterans are only just alive. I mean, they're now 99, 100, 101 years old. And I think for people of my generation, I dare say, even your generation, do it. You know, we're so used to meeting people who fought in those wars, but they've gone now. And that is a real shock, I think, when you actually come around to realizing that somehow you have some responsibility to keep these memories alive because they're people that you knew. And in my case, it was my grandfather, but you know, ev everyone has come forward to me. So many people come forward with personal stories about people they fought with, members of their family, uncles, grandfathers. Very few of them spoke of their experiences. That's the common thread. Yeah. Uh, just like my grandfather didn't speak until he was in his 70s. Uh, but it is shocking when you realize, actually, they've, they've fallen out of living memory now. And so, you know, you do feel, even though the movie was not made as a history lesson, you do feel there's a responsibility somewhere. Definitely. And a word on your two young leads as well. I, think, I mean, obviously, they're not, they're not greenhorns, are they? They've had a bit of experience, no. but they did a great job. They're amazing. I mean, we built, we constructed the entire movie around them, you know, and um, they just never, they, they just didn't make any mistakes, you know, and, and they worked so hard. They worked six months before we even rolled film on it. You know, they, they, it was. I said to them when I offered them the job, I said, this is less of a job, it's more of a way of life. It's more of a lifestyle choice. For <laughs> the next year of your life, you're basically going to be living this, you know. And um, they were just part of the team from day one. And, and um, you know, I, I, if there are regrets about this whole period, is that, that they haven't in some way been, able, you know, they haven't been celebrated a, 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 as much as perhaps they, I, I felt uh, they should be. But that's because obviously I'm, I love them and I'm biased and I feel that they, they just never put a foot wrong. The BAFTA is awarded to 1917 Roger I think it was George Orwell said uh, all films are equal, but some are more... No, all films are special, but some films are more special than others. And for me, this was a really special film. Not only thank you to Sam for involving me in it and giving me this challenge, but it was special for the crew that I was working with, some of them here tonight up there. I, I, wa I want to just mention a few... A few names. My wife, who worked on this film, and as, as I live with her, I know how hard she worked on the film. Uh, my focus puller, who's actually American, and I've worked with him nearly 30 years, Andy Harris. But you'll never notice his work until he makes a mistake. And I can't remember when he made a mistake, maybe in like 1996, I think, but uh, on one take, maybe. And I'd like to thank my the two wonderful operators, Peter Cavacuti and, and Charlie Rizek. Uh, 
Charlie, who got his British citizenship two weeks before we started shooting. Charlie. And I'd like to thank Gary Himes. Gary Himes and the wonderful GRIP crew. And John Higgins, Biggles, and the wonderful electrical crew. You won't find their names high on the list in IMDb. You might search for, for them to find the names, but thank you. This belongs to all of you. Thank you. And BAFTA, thank you. And the BAFTA, BAFTA goes, goes to... to 1970. Thank you so much for this honour. I can't tell you how much it means to us all. From the cast and crew, thank you. Um, as co-writer of this film, I was involved from a very early stage, right the way through production, and I got to witness firsthand how quintessentially British 1917 was. Not only was it shot all over the UK, locations from Govan Docks in Glasgow, which is my hometown, you can guess from the accent, <laughs> thank you, um, down to Salisbury Plain in Wiltshire, but it was skillfully crafted by over 1,200 British members of crew, demonstrating the depth of filmmaking talent in our incredible UK industry. It features an array of the very best British acting talent, alongside over a thousand stunt performers and very gung-ho, supporting artists, some almost too gung-ho. Um, but above all, we wrote 1917 to tell the story of a war which shaped the very fabric of our society and the unbelievable bravery of those who fought in it. So thank you. Thank you very much. And the BAFTA goes to 1917. <laughs> better than standing in mud in a trench. <laughs> uh, this uh, this uh, film was about uh, camaraderie. And, oh gosh, who do you thank? I want to thank everybody who worked on this film. I mean, everybody. It was an amazing project. The art department was unbelievable. And I want to thank uh, my old friends, uh, Sam Mendes and Roger Deakins. Uh, without them and their passion for this film, uh, it wouldn't have gotten made. It's, it's been amazing. I want to thank uh, my family, my friends, and uh, my beautiful wife, wife Amy Ness. Thank you. And the BAFTA goes to 1917. <laughs> Thank you, BAFTA. We would like to accept this award on behalf of the whole 1917 sound team, every one of whom did an outstanding work both in the trenches and the studio. Half the people I was going to thank aren't here. But anyway, Sam, thank you for taking us on a unique journey. Thank you, Pippa, Jane Ann, and Callum, our producers, Lee Smith, our editor, Mike Solinger, and of course, all our friends and family. Thank you.
And the BAFTA is awarded to Sam Mendes for 1917. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much, BAFTA. Um, uh, in the midst of all this hoopla and stuff, it's sometimes easy to forget the actual experience of shooting a movie. And I had a kind of director's paradise in this film that I think I will never, ever have again. So I want to say a real thank you to the people who actually helped me make this film. To three amazing producers, Jane Ann Tengren and Callum McDougall, and my dear friend, who I've known since I was 14 years old, Pippa Harris. Um, the best producers, really the best, the most supportive, to an incredible cast, to George Mackay, who was extraordinary in this film, and Dean Charles Chapman, and to, to the, the classiest bunch of day players a director could ever have, Andrew Scott, Colin Firth, Benedict Cumberbatch, Mark Strong, Richard Madden, incredible cast. Thank you. Thank you to the most extraordinary crew, and especially to four people. My production designer and friend, Dennis Gassner, to the brilliant Tom Newman for his music, to the extraordinary unsung hero of this movie, who was Lee Smith, the editor, and especially to Roger Deakins, the master himself. Um, thank you to all of them. And it's, yes, it's a war movie that we made, but it's also a movie about home and about family, so it's moving to me to get this in my hometown for the first time and to be able to say thank you to my beautiful family, um, to say thank you to my children Joe and Phoebe and the splendidly attired Charlie who is sitting with us tonight and of course especially to my inspiration, my beautiful wife Ali, this is for you. And a BAFTA goes to 1917. Thank you, BAFTA, for giving us a really wonderful night. Thank you very, very much. And thank you for all the people who have gone to see this movie in the cinemas. It's still on. Um, <laughs> thank you for the, to the crew up there in the gods. Thank you. Um, thank you to Amblin, Jeb Brody, Terry Press, Universal, Donna Langley, New Republic, uh, and all the home team at Neil Street, and all those people at E1 who helped release this movie, thank you for your support. You've heard enough from me. I want to introduce someone else to make a speech for a change, uh, the wonderful and the person we built this movie around, the extraordinary George Mackay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you, Sam. Um, it's, it's a really wonderful feeling when, you know, that sense of alignment... Um, and that's what we were going for every day with this film. There was never a lead element in terms of any department or anything other than the story and the shot that we were trying to get. So uh, we'd like to share this with every single member of the crew and the team who gave their time and themselves to the project. And, uh, and the whole process in the film itself is, uh, is a lesson in, in the goodness that can come in, in going for something that's bigger than yourself. So working together within that. So thank you very much. Cheers. BAFTA is awarded to 1917. Well, thank you so much, BAFTA, for the incredible honor. Um, we would not be standing here tonight without the uncompromising vision and passion of our director, Sam Mendes, who wanted our work to be not only seamless and invisible, but also entirely at the service of the story and creating a unique immersive experience. Um, I want to thank our wonderful producers, everybody at Amblin and Universal, my wife, I couldn't have done that without you. Um, 
and also the incredibly talented crew at MPC, 600 people who worked over three continents that put all their heart and soul in every single frame of the film. So we share that with you. Thank you. Uh, just quickly, I wanted to thank my wife for telling me I had to do this movie um, instead of taking a few weeks off, and also to my work wife, Will Newis, our producer in charge of our hundreds and hundreds of crew. Um, I say this all the time. Uh, fantastic team effort. I'd like to thank all the boys and girls back at, uh, back at the studios working so hard and all the crew. Um, fantastic team effort from everybody. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank it's, you. Well, particularly with the British side of things and the story that you've told and where you shot it, how does the fact that it been recognised for this particular character mean to you? Pippa? A huge amount. I mean, we shot all over the UK, so not just down in the south, but up in Glasgow as well. And the film is made by over a thousand incredibly skilled crew, all from the UK, as well as, of course, all the stunt people and all the background artists and all the cast. So it's a, it's a really, for all of them, it's, it's really exciting for us. Good speech, Christy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. She's still recovering. <laughs> do, you do, do you do that, though, where you go, all right, if we win, who's going to speak? Do you have to sign yeah, the kind went. of... You. Yeah. <laughs> she drew the short <laughs> straw. I found out yesterday before a party. Oh, so wow. I spent, I spent all last night worried. Oh, bless you. But, but this film has just... It's connected both in terms of audiences are absolutely loving this film, and then in terms of, you know, your peers and the recognition it's getting at award shows, what does that both side of things mean that it's, it's really connecting on both those levels? Sam? Well, I mean, I think the most important thing for all of us always was finding an audience, you yeah. know, and I think that w what you have this year is one of those lovely situations where awards have equaled more audience, and that doesn't always happen yeah. because the timing of award shows doesn't always roll into an actual cinematic release in movies, you know. I mean, we're also quite lucky this year, we ourselves, because if you want to see Marriage Story or The Irishman or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, you can basically turn on your televisions. And, and so if you want to see one of the end of year, you know, uh, movies, we're the one that's on in cinemas. So that's really helped us hugely. And a lot of it's to do with, with the awards and the timing of it. So it's lovely to feel like we're here promoting the film, you know, yeah. and not kind of, you, you know, just enjoying award shows, but actually saying, hey, if there's anyone watching this, please come and see it. It's still on in cinemas. It's still number one at the box office in the UK. It's number two in the US. You know, that's what we made it for. We made it for the big screen. We made it for audiences. So, mm -hmm. so come and watch it. And it, it, it has an impact on everybody that a movie like this with only, you know, with two actors in the leads who are not big stars can succeed on this level. It's good news for the industry. It's good news the amazing amount of talent in the UK. It was a huge pool of talent here. There's a reason why most American movies come and shoot in the UK these yeah. days, and Pinewood and Shepparton and Leavesden and Long Cross and every, you know, you can't get rid of, <laughs> rid of them. <laughs> it's, 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 difficult, it's difficult to find space for a UK movie, actually. But anyway, but you know, that's because, you know, the best people in the world are live in this country. And, and so it's, it's great for us. This is our home turf, all of us here, you know, um, and it's meaningful. Well, listen, it's the first award of the night. I've got loads of questions, but I'm not going to use them all up now because I imagine I might be seeing some of you a little bit later on as well. Fingers crossed! <laughs> um, thank you so much, I'm going to tell Parasite you said that. <laughs> well, that's not that award. It was the other one. Ah! Who ah. knows what awards I was talking about? No. There's Why 11 the? of them, for <laughs> goodness sake. Um, congratulations. It's so deserved, yeah. and it's wonderful to see you all here celebrating tonight. It's a 1917 party. I mean, this is it's unbelievable. Right. Best British film, best film, best cinematography, best sound, best visual effects, best production design, best director. Congratulations. Holy Moses. <laughs> Could you have predicted that tonight would, would, would end like this? No, I thought one of them might, but you know, look, we've got best, best British film and best film is amazing. And, and, um, and, it, and you know, it's meaningful for, I think, all of us. We're all, this, we're all you know, <laughs> this is our hometown, most of us. And, and you know, it's, a, it's the home crowd, so we feel really thrilled. I mean, that's fair to say. Yeah. Wouldn't they yeah. say that? Yeah. Yeah. I had a yeah, lovely with chat with your sound guys earlier, and it was just really nice because you're talking about all these craftsmen and women who they work so hard. George, in your speech, it was so lovely, you know, kind of just thanking everybody, this real team effort, this real collaboration, you know, from kind of start to finish, everybody having to bring their A game sort of thing. Pippa, for you, you know, producer, one of the producers on the film, how, what does it mean to you for for tonight and what the film has achieved. It's extraordinary, and as Sam was saying earlier, you know, the fact that the film is connected with such 
big audiences out there, both here and around the world. It's just, it's just thrilling for all of us. You know, we, we had a, a really amazing time making it, but to see so many people across the world loving it is really humbling, actually. Was it an easy thing to find, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's obviously set in First World War, and it's, it's, but it's not a war film, you know, it's, it's about human connection, it's about family, it's about, you know, it's, was it easy to kind of find that, I mean, writing the script together, was that, was that the really important element for you in terms of finding the heart and the soul in these two characters in particular? Oh, I think ultimately, you know, what 1917 is really about is what will you do to save someone you love? <laughs> and that's timeless. That doesn't have to happen in a war or anything like that. So that's the message, and anyone can connect to it. Has Andrew been forgiven for <laughs> the <laughs> amount of... <laughs> oh, <laughs> Could you at least clear that up in some form? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, as you say, I don't, I, don't want, I don't want to let him off. As much as it pains me to let him off the hook, <laughs> it wasn't actually destroyed by Andrew Scott's inability to smoke a cigarette. 45 days. Just a couple of them. I tried to get someone to get a lighter to give you as a present so that you had your equivalent of a BAFTA for the film tonight as well. Oh God, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving. <laughs> um, George and Dean, I'll speak to you just for a second. If you pass a mic back to one of these. You can have as many mics as you want. But, but being part of, of this production and the amount of work that you guys had to put in in terms of preparation for when the camera started, started rolling, how does it feel for you to tonight to see the film being recognised the way that it has been? It's just wonderful. It's just wonderful because, you know, it's, as you said, it's the, it's the biggest team effort and it's the biggest learning experience in terms of being around every department right from the very beginning and getting an, understand, an understanding of what you're in, like what you're a part of in a much more sort of three-dimensional and whole sense. So it's just, you know, it's, as Sam said earlier, the process for us is what we know almost more than this side of things. And what we know of it was a proper team effort. So to be here with everyone here tonight and to get recognised sort of across the board is really amazing. Tell you what, it's quite tricky getting a word out of Roger Deakins. He doesn't like to chat much. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? Mr. Chat himself. Yeah, what, what's, what's, the, what's your secret? Yeah. <laughs> what, 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 turn up with to the, the, the camera. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, you're amazing, yeah, you've yeah. just won a bath. He's like that, yeah, yeah, whatever. Like, oh, God. I'm loving that you're suffering under the same thing. All you're suffering. <laughs> I love that you suffered as his director well, on you know, this well. Yeah, I mean, but the He's, funny thing is that if you, if you, you know, on a good day with Roger, I've, I've said this many times, you, you'd say almost nothing because, you know, you've done all the talking before. And when he does actually sit one-on-one, -on -one, he is an amazing person to talk to and he sees everything and he is a master of light and composition and camera movement and all of those things. But you can't get it out of him one-on-one -on -one <laughs> <laughs> with a microphone in your hand, I'm afraid. <laughs> What's the biggest challenge for you in terms of, you know, coming into it as a producer as well and the different sides that everybody, you know, that I love that idea of... of Every producer almost has a different role that they bring <laughs> towards the family sort of thing. But for you, kind of looking back on thinking... Well, I think the, the biggest challenge for everybody was the weather. <laughs> you know, yeah. where so we going to make our Britain? day? It's yeah. probably it's the only movie I've ever done where we've um, fallen behind in the schedule and then the very next day we've been two days ahead. So <laughs> wow. it's, it, it was quite extraordinary and we all became weather experts. Actually, Callum can He's speak to this much weather. better than me. <laughs> New hobby or one you'd never ever have to think about ever no, again? No, it's great. I, I love looking at that one. <laughs> <laughs> He's got it's many apps, let me tell you, many weather apps. Yeah. <laughs> All the weather apps. Um, can I just finish with you two? Because the idea of coming in is this wonderful ensemble cast. And I don't know, was it a really different experience for you both in terms of, you know, you had really important little parts to this jigsaw puzzle, which it's just, I, you know, still can't quite get my head around how it all falls into place. But what was it like for you being... Shall I go first? You go, Mark. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I think coming into a movie that has been so incredibly well prepared to come in and do what is essentially quite... A small piece of uh, it's been amazing to see how relevant it is to the whole process and, yeah. and my, my my favorite memory I think is is Sam's uh, hysteria at the fact that I came in and was really amazed that when I started talking and finished talking uh, it fitted exactly the route that I'd been asked to walk and I thought <laughs> I thought I was brilliant I'd like look I've managed to start here and finish here it's said, exactly what a coincidence <laughs> yeah <laughs> thank goodness I'm I like it's not an effing coincidence <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> so uh, I think on my exact words. yeah but it was great coming into something that was so kind of incredibly well prepared I know Sam of old I've worked with him before and when he said you want to come and do something there was there was no question because you know it's going to be an extraordinary thing and obviously that's yeah. proved to be the case
Amazing. Well, listen, thank you so much for all popping by again to it's chat to me. Uh, I don't think there's any more awards to give out, so here. Uh... Is this it for us? Uh, no, I'm sorry, yeah. I think you've been... Been, you've been like a mascot for oh, us over the last two months. Bless you. Um, congratulations. Thank really, you. really Thanks deserved. So and go and celebrate and thank have a brilliant so night. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank Cheers. You.